welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Magic Forum radio show, or I should say officially, Magic Forum uh, live. And with my host, my co-host, of course, Rudy. And we have a guest, but you're not supposed to see that person. He's in the wings right now. Rudy, what's happening? It's the first show. The first man, show. I'm so excited. I know. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying yes to doing this, man. You know, the Magician's Forum has been around for three years. I'm trying to always figure out ways, new ways, creative ways to add value to the community. And having a live aspect, a show like this, to help uh, you know complement what's all the conversations that are taking place there. I'm just really excited, man. So thank you for joining me in this effort. I appreciate it. This well, I will tell you, and and obviously our it, it, funny being a magic show, and our guest is totally in full view because that's the way he likes his magic, you know, <laughs> uh, totally transparent. But um, before we get into our guest, as people, are, I feel like we're on like a Johnny Carson type of show, which by the way shows my age, um, and and we're seeing the monitor going in the green room right now is our guest. And people are going, oh, I'm so excited. But uh, you should be excited because we have a, an amazing show lineup. Some, some of the things that you should know that are going to happen. Throughout the show, we have lots of great elements. And the cool thing is, Rudy, of being a syndicated radio guy for so many years and being very sort of savvy at all this, I'm very excited that this is a technically, a, in essence, a live vlog show. And that's with a V, <laughs> vlog, which is video <laughs> log type of show. I think I called it a vlog when I was talking to you because I'm so That's because you're like it. ghetto, dude. You're like, give me <laughs> the b-log what's I up dude good. uh iri, iri, iri. um but the cool thing is is that you know what what better element to produce a show uh about magicians and magic than to do something where you can actually see it i totally agree yeah. absolutely it's visual art yeah yes. visual art and um the other thing i wanted to say about this is that you can also get this you can go to the magiciansforum.com i highly recommend and so does rudy and our guest recommend that you go to the magiciansforum.com because on there there is a page link you can click it and see some of the stuff we're talking about perhaps some of the tutorials some of the different things some of the different guests and their bios and how you can reach them and quite honestly if they have product out there we'll also give you a link to how they can you can obtain that as well right rudy yeah, and I also think it's a great opportunity for people to dialogue about the topics and subjects that we uh, bring up uh, up here to the, in the show. Absolutely. So I think if we go over there and we can just expand and the conversation continues long after this vlog. I mean, vlog is <laughs> over. They can just keep on talking. So I'm going to get think... a sound effect every time you say vlog. I'm going to go, iri, iri. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the other thing I want you to know, folks, is that we will also have this available on um, a podcast. So podcast meaning that it will be an audio as well. So we're hitting you from all cylinders with this engine because this is something that you all should see. And you can see by the lower thirds right now, you can see Rudy's name and who he is. And of course, you can see mine in the lower thirds and all the information. And when we go to break, we're going to be giving you great tips like maybe even deck reviews or trick reviews from some of our friends around the world in the magic world. So this is exciting. Male, female, young, old. This is a show for all. Isn't that right? Yeah, and I would always encourage some uh, folks to have a deck of cards nearby or a coin or something because you, I'm sure stuff is going to be taught as we move along here. Prerequisite. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I got my deck here, and I would encourage you to go grab a deck in the case that maybe Mike wants or any other guest wants to teach you something. So go grab so a deck. there it hey. is. So with that being said, we have our guest in the wings. By the way, we, we are splitting this man. He is in the middle. You cannot ignore him, even if you tried. <laughs> Considering his career, that's even more obvious. But uh, I'm going to let you take the reins there, Rudy, and just introduce our guest. Very excited. Our first guest, wait, can I get a drum roll? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, I first first saw Mike in an old video. Unfortunately, I don't have it anymore. A video where you had a mullet, Mike, oh. and it was a great, it was some great magic. One of the, one of the tricks that you taught on there that <laughs> sticks out to me the most, because it fooled the heck out of me, was you put a coin into a little jelly, jelly. thing, uh, and I just, it <laughs> fooled the <laughs> hell out of he me. A, and so, <laughs> he has the same one in the back of the bookshelf. It's somewhere. It's now a <laughs> hard candy he serves to people. All right. <laughs> and I, I, when I so that video introduced me to you a long time ago, and so then when you had first joined the forum, I go, I remember this guy. And so uh, you're, of course, if for those who haven't seen, aren't familiar with Mike's magic, incredibly talented oh, wow. book, power plays and other books like that, you might be familiar <laughs> with his PM principle or his Penguin lecture. Oh, Just yeah. very. Uh, I don't know if, if can they see your library behind you? I yeah, mean, yes, it's an yeah. Extensive library. I'm jealous. I just have <laughs> blue. 
<laughs> <laughs> and it, but it's reflected that that library, that vast library, is, is it's reflected in his knowledge of magic, and you'll see just the incredible way that he thinks, very creative approach to magic. And uh, I, I invited him, first of all, because he's a friend and I think he has a lot to offer us as magicians. I also wanted to give him an opportunity to promote his new book, which me, along with other members of our forum, had were given the opportunity to help him edit that. And it was what yes, a joy indeed. that is. So um, without further ado, Mr. Mike Powers, thank you for hey, joining us, yeah. my friend. Robert. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys very much, and thank you, Will, for having the show. I was really uh, unfamiliar with it, and Rudy emailed me and said, hey, you want to be on the show tomorrow? I said, this sounds fantastic, and it's way cooler. I had no idea what it is, but I think you have a wonderful concept, Will, and uh, this is the launching of the, the, the magic uh, version of your show, and, and you are a magician, too, which yes. is really cool. I, I went on your website, yeah. and I see the springing the cards from hand to hand. You've got a, a lot of very interesting skills. I do. Um, Thank and, you. <laughs> and, well, I don't know all of them. Yeah, and yeah. Don't, let's not go TMI on me. Yeah, here, right. but, and, anyway, people, um, people, no. I, I will say that people always say, man, you do so many things. And I go, yeah, I wish I could do one thing and make a living. <laughs> well, I think, you, I think you have done that. But I think Rudy missed this. I tried to get the book out. This is... Uh, the, the the mullet cut here. I think aye, you can see aye. it on camera. So this is the guy that was in the video. Rudy's talking about. I think Rudy's having some trouble seeing it. So he, he, but he he remembers I'm very that. Very familiar that, with that mullet. And, Actually, and I, I and I will tell you, Mike, that I worked for. I don't. I think probably a very good portion of magicians in the world can say this. But I worked at a magic shop when I was from 16 to about. 30 about 10 years called zucchinis tricks and things and you know i have to be honest with you <laughs> i honestly think i remember seeing that picture of you wow <laughs> back well, this, in this, the this, 80s or 90s brother well th yeah no that's exactly right this book is from 1990 See? so that's when you would have seen it <laughs> and i think the video rudy's talking about was 1991 <laughs> i look back here i'm, I'm going to take another quick look because it would be cool to show this video thing if i've got it not the video but but to show the, the picture of it i just uh wait wait Hold on, yeah, I'm going to stand up. If you start climbing on the, the bookshelf, though, I'm going to have to stop you. <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> We're going to have I Mike back it... again because he climbs on the bookcase like Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla. Well, Rudy, you know, if he had told me he had that, was going to do that, I'd have the video out here to show you. But, but um, you know what, I mean, Mike? You know... Let, me, let me interrupt and tell you that if you do have the video, by all means, folks, take a look at this right now. I actually obtained the video, and you can see you some of the video container? here. Yeah, and um, by, by the way, that's one of the elements. Elements on the show that we'll have that you can see okay. video as see we're doing this and different <laughs> angles because Mike hit the angles it's almost like a low oh, yeah. hit the switch oh yeah you okay hit so the switch yeah I've got my switcher over here for it I got three cameras so if you see me reaching over I'm going to try to give you a better view these guys are going to keep me into the proper view so here's the uh, here's the close-up wow. view of the hands which is really nice and then I've got the over the shoulder shot I have to lean in and you might oh, uh, I put my wow. I put my head I put my hat on. I'm not going to show you. I just didn't want you to see the, the reflection off the back of my head back there. But this is this is the really close up shot. And also for teaching purposes, this is yeah, you can say hold, hold a break and do things. Sure. You can see the, the rear view. So I'm switching back to the awesome. friendly view where I can talk to you guys. You, you're 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 very stealth, young <clears throat> man. He is. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, Mike. You know, just since I brought up the book, you know, uh, it's Tesseract. Is that how you pronounce the name? Yep. It is so, Tesseract. So what, can you uh -oh. tell us what that name is now? I know dinosaur? because I read the, <laughs> but for those of us who have no idea what the hell yeah. Tesseract is. Yeah, well, okay. Well, this, this is a, a question I worry about because you could launch into a 20 minute thing and, and Will's grimacing going, no, we don't need a 20 minute time, thing here. No, no. Time. Uh, I'm going to show you that, that, that um, I was a former physics teacher, and cosmology, the understanding how the universe came to be, how it works, planets, nebula, black holes, especially black holes, which people love to talk about, this gets into four-dimensional stuff. And so the concept of being of a four-dimensional thing is pretty kind of far out. So as we have length, width, and height, what else could there be? And it's a long haul to really explain it. And uh, I started off the book with this long chapter, and these guys talked me out of it. It said, you're going to scare people. It looks like a math textbook. I said, you're right. Let's boil it down to something cool and put that up front with a couple pages. But let me show you the cover of the book, um, because there is a Tesseract on, on the cover. So 
Uh, there is the there is the book. I'm really proud of this. I did the cover art myself, although this this art is kind of cannibalized. But if you look right into the middle, right there, I don't know how close people can get. But this gizmo right here is a tesseract. In fact, if I can go off camera for just a second, yeah. is that cool, Will? Yeah. Let me get. I, I have it right here. I will show you one. And obviously, notice Rudy. He's not asking you for permission on anything. I know you're the boss already. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Whose who's show is it? That's what I always remind. It is myself. both of ours. This is the Magic <laughs> Forum uh, oh, live. I guess that's true. All right. Well, this is this is the shadow of a four-dimensional object. So check this out. A shadow of a three-dimensional object would be two-dimensional. Yep. If you took a cube and cast a shadow of just a straight-up cube, it would be a two-dimensional thing on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. This is three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. This is the shadow of a, what a four-dimensional cube is. Now, there's a long story about why it has all these features and some crazy stuff, but ultimately, I called the book Tesseract because I just think it's really cool. <laughs> but is there any way that that translates, you know, this concept of four dimensions to the way that you view magic? Uh, I think a little, a little bit. I, because I needed to kind of justify the title, which is what you're asking me to do, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, in the introduction of the book, I kind of draw some parallels between the hidden dimension. The subtitle of the book is Magic, the Hidden Dimension. Mm -hmm. And so in, in some ways, I feel like we're in the fourth dimension unseen by our spectators or that the things that we're doing in magic are unseen so we're turning over yeah. two cards and they think we're turning over one card sure. we're elmsley counting and they don't see that there's a reversed card in there so we're living in this world that they're not in and so i try to you know justify the concept of the fourth dimension by uh tying it into magic that way and i keep it pretty short because i don't think uh I have the, the wisdom that somebody like Tamarez or Eugene Berger has. Mm. But I, I suggest, listen, you guys, take a deep dive into the relationship between the magician and the spectator and get Tamarez's new book or Eugene Berger's work. Mm -hmm. These guys are the gurus of this stuff, and I will not purport to be that. I have kind of a simple view of it that ties into the concept of Tesseract, and I just let it go at that and say, here's, here's the deep dive into this relationship between the magician and the spectator. Yeah, and I mean that Tamarez. Yeah, and, Mike, and Michael, if that doesn't work, you certainly can sell it as Tesseract, the lost dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> are there any pictures? But this sounds stupid to ask, but actually not as a magician. Are there uh, pictures? Oh, yeah. Let me. Well, let's let's just but, get know, into it's the. It's not like uh, a Marlowe. Yeah. Who, who's the one that just doesn't do any pictures at all? And you're like, oh, man, this is going to be a long time. Oh. oh, no. Hold on. This is good. So I'm glad you asked that question. So here's. Look at that. The the view from the close-up of the book, awesome. the back side, the back side is me holding uh, the tesseract, the shadow of the tesseract, kind of getting that fourth-dimensional weird yeah, black thing it. going. Yeah, I don't see I don't a mullet, by the way. Oh, hold on, I want you to see my wife here, so is that your you wife? can tell us. This is my wife a few years ago, a couple of years ago, maybe, and there's there's me more recently uh, behind the bar down at a restaurant I, I work at, Great. and uh, my wife. Uh, wow. So I wanted people to be jealous by yeah, having this. I, I am jealous and I'm wondering, you must be really, really rich because she, she's, she's really a musician beautiful. Too, so. Oh man, that, that, <laughs> that's harsh. That I'm that, sorry. That, that, <laughs> but anyway, to answer your question, I'm going to page through it real quickly. So here's the table of contents. There's uh, uh, eight different sections. I won't you know, go into too much here, but there's eight sections. There's a lot of card stuff, and then there's some cool, there's some memorized deck things. There's a oh, cool. real mind reading thing. There's a ring and rubber band trick. Wow. So I tried to diversify. A lot, a lot of card magic. That's my first love. Sure. But to answer your question about pictures, uh, there are yeah. loads of pictures in here. Good and I did, the, the, the photos came out great. I got special paper uh, to... Um, uh, really make them pop. So when you look at this book live, this shiny paper really brings out these black and white photos. And I'm really, really happy with how they came out. That was the big thing I was worried about when you don't have the book. You know, I'm going, geez, I hope those photographs don't get, don't look too dark. That was my nightmare. Yeah, yeah. And they just came out great. So I'm really, really pleased with the book. And uh, the, here, oh, here's the Tesseract again over here. Um, and of course, the black hole. So anyway, there's Creating the Tesseract, if you really want to take a deep dive into what a Tesseract is, there's about seven pages that you can ignore or take the dive into it. You're at your risk. So, But anyway, there's lots of pictures in here. The rubber band routine has 22 photographs because rubber band is like, put yeah. your thumb in, oh, yeah. you know, so 
hard to explain. Absolutely. Yeah, he asked if I would run through that particular effect as the book was being edited, and I just, you know, trying to learn rubber band magic from a book is incredibly challenging. Do you think you, uh, in the end, do you think you were able to effectively communicate how to to yeah. uh, perform that effect, Mike? Because that's not an easy task to yeah. to teach something like that. Yeah. See, what I, what I was hoping Rudy was going to say is Mike made it so easy to understand that rubber band trick. I but I, pictures. It was like, I'm walking, like a walk through the park. Yeah. But, I, I didn't even need pictures. Why did he even bother? <laughs> All those pictures, the words are fine. Well, yeah. right, so now, now, now we have to be honest here. So basically what happened was, and this is, I'm glad I did this. I had my little editing crew. I had six guys that I would send tricks out to. And I knew this rubber band trick was going to be hard to explain. There's three phases. And the third phase is just a weird, I, you know, I've, I've done lectures and tried to do this and wasted 15 minutes going, you know, put your thumb in there. I mean, really, I, I thought I'm going to make the effort. They give everybody the tools. Okay, here we go. And, and it was just like, oh, my God, why did I do that? <laughs> so my new philosophy is when I lecture, it's going to be like, here's what it looks like and see me later for a personal instruction yeah. Yeah. or buy the book. Hey, there's 22 pictures that make it easy. But, but, the, but Rudy was right. And, and I'm glad I ran it by these guys because um, at the end of the day, I, I adjusted my text and my pictures based on their feedback. Oh, good. And uh, Anthony Vinson, who Rudy knows, mm -hmm. um, emailed me and he said, once I got the new stuff and I saw that rubber band pop through the, through the ring, he went, oh man, whoa. He, it, was, it looked like magic to him. Yeah. But yeah. It's one of those things where just a few words and a picture and a letter A right in there, and all of a sudden he went, oh, there it is, and boom. So um, I, think, I think it works. Contrary to all the stuff Rudy said about how hard it is to do this stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, thanks for selling the book, Rudy. Thanks for selling the book, buddy. Yeah, good job. Can you Your copy is in the out? mail. My, 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 yeah. No, so, you know, th that's a, a great point. And, you know, collaborating, this is what's wonderful about nowadays is that you can collaborate in so many different ways. And the uh, fact is, is that, you know, how many times have you gotten a book that you look at it magic wise and you just kind of keep reading it and reading it and going, you know what, this is awful. I'm throwing it down. And you go, I mean, it's neat to have it and I got it signed, but what am I going to do with this? Because this is worse than quantum physics. Uh, right. So, you know, no, quantum uh, physics is great. What yeah, do you say? It might be, but knowing what uh, Deepak Chopra is saying is another oh. story. There you go. Okay. All right. All there right. You go. Um, hey, we're going to take a small break. By the way, if you're interested in this book, we will have information on themagicforum.com, themagicforum.com. Uh, if hey, you remember, want, what's the that? Magicians Forum, like oh. blog, not vlog. It's See. the Magicians Forum. The Magicians Forum. I went short on the name. <laughs> the magi you're going to be telling me that for a while. But that's okay. <laughs> I, I talk too much anyway, and you have to have at least a couple of words. <laughs> right. Uh, the Magician's Forum, of course, magicians, the magiciansforum.com. You can go there. This is the Magician's Forum live. And on Instagram, you can go to the Magician's Forum. That's the Magician's Forum. My personal Instagram, uh, I'm not going to give all of them. I'll just get the main one, the Honest Huckster. That's Honest Huckster. And you can go to my site at honesthuckster.com. Uh, so, Rudy, let's take a break. When we come back, I want to ask some basic what What's happening in the world of magic to our guest, Mike Powers, if you don't mind? Okay, yeah. I'm All here right. to answer. All right, folks, taking a small break. I think you're going to like the break when you see what we're going to show you. Hang tight. We'll be right back after this break. Awesome. That's right. It's here. It's in stock. The fabulous egg. Check this out. You get an egg and three blank face cards. They're not bicycle back, but they're just three blank face cards. The idea is this egg is going to melt right through this close-up pad just like this keep your eye on it with a little rub like this look at that melts through and lands there now you didn't know what to expect watch we'll we'll do it one more time this egg on this time over here it's gonna melt through and land right here one two little rub just like that I've got it now the last one's very very important the last one you know exactly what I'm gonna do right there it's gonna land here one two just like that just like this, it should land. How come it's not? Should What the heck? How come? Oh man, broke the egg. That's the fabulous egg. Come on down. Everything's examinable. Peace out. Hey!
welcome back to the Mad Magicians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee whiz. That's okay. The Magicians Forum Live. I'm not going to say it. Uh, I'm not going to say it right just because I keep you on your feet. Welcome back to the Magicians <laughs> Forum. Uh, the Magicians Forum Live. And, of course, myself, Will Roberts, and... Rudy Tinoco. That's right. I've been saying Tanako, so I guess that's wrong, too. It's uh, Rudy Tinoco from the Magic, Magic Forum. The Magicians Forum with... <laughs> The, on our first vlog, uh, our first vlog, yeah, vlog. Uh, before we go back into our guest, which by the way is Mike Powers, very excited. I just really quickly, Rudy, can you give us a little background, a bio on yourself? We're going to tell people who we are. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a good I idea. Like yeah, well, I'm not a full time magician. I'm pretty much a hobbyist. Although I've been given a lot of opportunities to go and perform, so I do now in, anymore. I'm doing more corporate gigs, but I I love card magic. And when I created the Magicians Forum about three years ago, uh, I I created it to bring hopefully something different. I know there's a lot of magic forums out there, but I wanted to create an atmosphere where there's respect and some brotherly kindness and maturity a, a, a troll free as i call it environment troll for us free. to be able to discuss magic because if you've been to any other forums you know that it gets bogged down with a lot of freaking nonsense and people uh, grammar police and arrogance and i think what we've created is something really special where you have people respecting one another and you can come there and freely talk about magic without worrying about whether or not somebody's going to correct your your grammar or disrespect you or talk down right. to you so it's a i think we've accomplished that and so if you like i said if you haven't been there just go check it out the magicians forum .com, I yeah think you'll yes and indeed. by the way great, just so you site. know it's the only one with the tv show there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and right. Mike, I'm right. sure you would say that because Mike and and because uh, it's not me who's created this environment. I mean, it's magicians like Mike and others who we together are are cultivating the environment there of, of friendliness. And so, would would you say, Mike, that we've been able to accomplish that goal? Absolutely, but don't sell yourself short, Rudy. Rudy's leadership um, and maintaining that atmosphere. And I don't think there's ever been an incident that you even had to jump in and go, hey, cut that out. I mean, it just has such an atmosphere of friendliness uh, that just people just fall right into that. And there haven't been any issues at all that I'm aware of. I've never seen anything. So it's a really great site. I go there every day a couple of times and uh, find that I can ask questions and get answers, sometimes provide answers to other people's questions, which is one of the major functions of a site. And then there's just, you know, showing a trick. Somebody says, hey, watch this YouTube video. And it's just great. I mean, it's such a stimulating place to go. And there's lots of sites to go to. I've been to many of them. This is one of the best ones for sure. So yeah. themagiciansforum.com. Yeah, and thank you, know, you Rudy. There's too much actually to go to. And here we are. Um, Michael, you've been doing magic for 100 years. Um, <laughs> yeah, about. Uh, Rudy, you've been doing it for 100 years. And I've been doing it for 100 years. And, the, and let's just be honest the, that the, there's a lot of places that people that are beginning, advanced, and in the middle, that you can go and get confused, especially nowadays. There's all mm -hmm. the YouTube stuff. There's all the Instagram stuff. There's, you know, angles. And there's this, the, I almost said the person's name that does a lot of this type of stuff that's virtually impossible unless you have a setup and good cameras. And the, the bottom line is, is that getting a place where you can actually go and get the guidance from beginning middle to the end is really the key in magic because if anybody in their worth their salt they're always going to say hey who is some of your mentors well i know mm -hmm. I grew up with several of them. I can mention it right off the bat that I knew and, and would uh, gain performance and, and technique from. And the fact is, is that that's the magician's forum. And being able to keep that something pure is really kind of the, the real deal as opposed to making a commercial and saying, yeah, buy this tutorial and do this and, you know, join our thing and you'll be confused at the end, you know? Right. Now, we, I always had the opportunity to give a little introduction of, uh, of myself, well, I know you are. You're a model, actor, model. You, a magician. Wait, you're done. I know you're, you're get, good with ropes you are and so whips, done. but you might want to give a context as to how you are good with ropes and whips. Uh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll give you. you. You start off with model, brother. I'm going to keep talking to you. you just stop. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Will Roberts. Uh, I've been a professional magician, trick roper. I'm a Guinness World Book of Records trick roper, gun spinner. I worked for Cirque du Soleil for four years on the strip on a show called Viva Elvis. Um, I really, I'm uh, again a 
little bit jack of all trades and old enough to say a master at a couple of them. And <clears> so, uh, and obviously a lot of background. I worked with Fox uh, Kids Club for about seven years on air. So I did that. So a little bit of everything. I, I deal in a lot of social media, a lot of this tech stuff in order to bring stuff like this to things. Honestly, guys and gals out there, uh, and that's the subject we'll deal with soon, um, is that I like to be able to do things that I feel passionate about. And this mm-hmm. day and age, there's a lot of stuff that I'll say, hashtag fake news, that's out there that we are following, but yet not really getting any kind of gratification from. And I can tell you right now, they're going to watch us and see Mike Powers, and they're going to see this stuff here and go, wow. And that's really one of the things that when Rudy and I started talking, he came up to me and said, you know, we follow each other on Instagram. And, and I thought, wow, I love the Harry Lorraine stuff he does, but you know, he has a love for this and it's, everybody can do magic. But to have a love for it and really have the passion to be able to say, I not only want to look good and get the applause, but I want you to get it too, is one of the biggest keys, Rudy, why I started and decided to do this with you. Uh, well, thanks, Will. Yeah. I appreciate it very much. Well, I'm good. As I said, this is a great partnership and I'm excited about the future. So enough about me. Yes. You, Mike Powers. I'd love for people to be able to have an opportunity, if they don't already know or aren't familiar with your work, for you to demonstrate something from the book. Now, we, on our Saturday sessions, which is a, a one of the, I think, one of the best parts of the Magician's Forum is these, yeah. uh, what we call the Saturday sessions, which is where we gather and then on online, we have this video session yeah. where you get about yeah, 20, great. 30 guys on a call. And yeah, it's amazing. Magic, you can share. It's, we have, you know, sometimes up to 10, 12, 13 guys on the screen and then other people watching That's where great. they're learning. So it's wonderful. But in one of these Saturday sessions, Mike, you showed a version of uh, Jazz Aces that you call yeah. New Jack. Or yes. can, you, can you demonstrate sure. that? Now, the wonderful thing yeah. for after you watch this. If you go to the Magicians Forum and go down to, you're going to see a link where you can go to the show and you'll, Mike is kind enough that he's going to share the method behind what you're about to see here. But would you show that to us, Mike? Yeah, yes, I I, I sure will. And I think maybe the way to do, to show the method is to just extract the PDF from the book and say, here's a little piece of the book to uh, test Uh drive. Uh So you get to see what the trick is. Um, the first section of the book uh, has card magic that's sort of anytime, anywhere. And what I like about New Jazz is that the it's eight cards. It's very clean and clear. Sometimes we get into crazy stuff and it's hard to remember what somebody says. What did that magician do? And you go, I don't have these things. And he was laying them out and counting stuff. And this this one is just so clear cut. So let me. Uh, I'm going from a shuffle deck in use. So I could have extracted all the key cards earlier, but I thought let's demonstrate a real world version of this. So I'm um, getting the four aces. Yeah, this is a really cool trick. Um, the variation of jazz aces. And I'll switch to the close up here in a second, but I want to go from a shuffle deck in use to kind of show that this doesn't have any setup or anything. It's a very pure trick with with eight cards. So we've got the four aces. We'll get back to those guys in a second. And some what we call indifferent cards. I'm just going to use black indifferent cards. Here's four cards, uh, four black cards. So let's get to the the close-up shot, and I think things will be a little bit more clear. So uh, I did say these were the aces. That's the ace of diamonds, the ace of clubs, the ace of hearts, and the ace of spades. So let's lay out the aces. These are the follower aces. That's number one, number two, number, oh, sorry, that's the ace of spades. Goes here. That's the leader ace, traditional. And of course, we have the black spot cards. So uh, here's what happens. We take the uh, black spot cards, take one of them and place it on the ace. You give a little, oh boy, I almost forgot. You got to put an ace in among the spot cards. You give a little twist and that ace jumps back, leaving us with, of course, just the four spot cards. Let's try that again under test conditions. The nine of clubs goes onto the leader pack and into the ace, the ace goes into the black spot cards, a little twist and the ace jumps back a second time. And of course, in its place, we get the nine of clubs. Let's do it one last time. I guess there's one more ace to go. We have the eight of spades. Eight of spades goes down, and into the spot card packet goes an ace, the twist, and the ace jumps back. Now, this is the traditional method from um, from Peter Kane. Well, not the method, but the effect. Now, at the end of the day here, we've got the, the four black spot cards, four aces, but I 
notice that the ace of spades has actually never moved from that position. So I wanted to show what would happen if we took the ace of spades and used it. So in other words, we had the three followers and the leader. Followers were here, the leader was here. The big question is this, what if we replace the ace of spades with one of the black spot cards and put the ace of spades here? And the answer is that those three aces would follow the leader and we would have all the spot cards awesome. back here and all the aces right. over here. That's so great. I, I love Oops. stuff that clean because, you know, you can grab it out, do it. It's definitely impromptu. And that is very clean, my friend. Now, Mike, there's a part, if I remember. Switch cameras, Mike. I, uh, <laughs> there's a part on, on of that, and I can't remember because, unfortunately, I can't see you, which is stupid. But uh, <laughs> there's a part in there that I think is a throw-off for magicians because I remember I either misremembered it particular part did do you remember what that was or is there a, a point in there oh, okay i think i know what you're talking about well we're getting a little bit more toward the explanation could be kind of leave sort of a half-baked i don't really mind if you if you want to uh throw a little bit out there about how this thing works is that okay will or should we uh, yeah just uh, just a little bit because we don't want to give too much away and we also do have a, a break to go too soon but go ahead okay well, you know what? Maybe maybe we should just leave it to uh, leave it at that. I and mean, Rudy's right. There there is a part well, where we'll see it. I want to see it now. You oh. got me intrigued. Everybody's yeah, because he threw me off because oh, okay. I thought, wait, what the hell? I want to see it. There's, I'm All right. Something. There's and the so handling just... where you do the uh, the the turnover that I okay. love. Okay. Well, let's. I think Rudy's talking about this. So the, we got to this point where we said there's the ace of clubs, the ace of hearts, the ace of diamonds, the ace of spades. This is a fairly well-known situation. Magicians right. aren't going to be necessarily be fooled. I think this is the part that Rudy's talking about. I said, you're going to show the aces. Now, this is unusual. And there's a little throw off where you say, so the aces go here and you go, oh, wait, the ace of spades goes here. And so, you know, I mean, there's a little hint of the explanation here, yes, which right. was this card didn't get shown, but there's a subtlety that makes it seem like it did get shown. That's right. That's, that's that's, I, I think that's what Rudy is talking that's about. Right. It's like, didn't didn't he show us the ace? So it yeah. seems like, wait a minute, how can this work if those are, you know, right. because you, it is a one ahead principle for those that know right. uh, the, the trick. So we're talking to magicians here. We don't have to worry about an explanation, right. but there's a lot of details in there. And then you're right about the double turnover is kind of a, a fairly clean way of, of doing. Yeah, Mike, so, that's, that was it. So I'm glad you remembered because I think that was it. I could have swore I saw you show the ace spades and you didn't. And it I was. I laughed at myself and go, dang right. it, that, that flew by me. So, you know, I mean, we're, we know what to usually look for. So I think, you know, your average spectator, they're, they're screwed. They're, they're, they're not going to be able to figure that out. But I love that the handling of that. And again, that you're going to be able to uh, share that with us. So you're sure. willing to do that. Man, that's really yeah. kind of you. So thanks, Mike. Yeah. Cool. So remember, you're going to go to the website, of course, themagiciansforum.com, themagiciansforum.com. Hey, Michael, where can we pick up the book if we want to? And we're running yeah. around the streets. So where would we find it? Well, that's a good question. I, the book is just coming out. I have an advanced copy, which I showed you. And there's a, like a ton of books on the way to Murphy's Magic in California. Oh, they, just, they just went out from Michigan today. So this is a little kind of a sneak preview of what's to come. It's not available exactly today. So we're going to wait for Murphy's to get their books. They're going to be doing some major promo to get it to the shops. In fact, if the viewers are curious, go to your shop and say, "Hey, I'm waiting for this book to come out and go. help and help and help help the distribution." It should be coming to the magic shops uh, in about a week to ten days. So you know, it's it's on the way out, and I just have an advanced copy that I can show you. I'm real happy to have that today awesome. by by luck. And then, uh, Michael, do you have a website that we can visit if we're interested in taking a look at your magic and maybe booking you? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's called mallofmagic.com, just like it sounds. And I've got some products on there, some uh, things that I've done in, in the past that have been very successful, like diminishing returns. I'm sure Rudy oh, is aware yeah. of that. Exactly. That was just featured on uh, Life on the uh, Mag Masters of Illusion uh, uh, the, a couple of weeks ago. So it was really fun to see somebody and going, holy smokes, he's doing my trick on the show. <laughs> Which, which was great. And then I, you know, then you can point to the, say, hey, advertising, look at this guy on national television doing the trick. So it's a really great endorsement. That trick's been around for over 20 years and it still sells a lot every single year. It's one of those ones that magic dealers will know for sure as a demo item. So that's, that's my biggest success story in magic was the uh, diminishing returns trick. 
Great awesome. stuff. Mike Powers, <laughs> Mike Powers, magician. And um, Rudy, uh, take us out and take us into a break. Um, by all means, you can give uh, his information again about where to get a hold of him and then tell everybody where to get a hold of us. Yeah. So once again, that's mallofmagic.com. Mike Powers has some great stuff, some free stuff too. You'll learn some that's magic off that he's yeah. giving you know, free giveaways. So make sure you go over there. Mike Powers is, a, a, again, a very talented magician. I hope you're going to go visit Mall of Magic. And if you want to learn the trick that you just saw, head over to the magiciansforum.com. Go down and you'll see a category there, the show, and there'll be a link there to what he's going yeah. to It's going to be a PDF. So I hope you'll go and check us out. So now we're going to take a break, and we'll be back after these words. Absolutely. When we come back, we're going to talk about and give questions. Rudy, I'll talk. We've got some other people coming up. And Tony Clark, don't go away. We'll be right back. Must have. Hey, it's time to make some magic. I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ketchup bottle and I'm place it in this bag. Watch really slow. I place it in a bag. I give it a one, two, three, and you know what happens? It disappears. That's right. It's gone. But I know what you're saying. Can you bring it back? I will bring it back. One, two, and three, and voila! It comes right. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, for you guys in the back, the cheap seats. I will do it one more time. Here we go. One, two, three, and it's actually gone. Yes? You don't, you don't believe? It's actually gone. This is Joe Misdirections. That's called the Vanishing Ketchup Bottle. We also have the Vanishing Coke, the Vanishing Wine Bottle, the Champagne Bottle, and the Beer Bottle. This is Joe Misdirections, Classics of Magic. Well, there it is. Boy, Mike Powers, what a great guest. Isn't he, though? I tell you, man, he's knowledgeable. Well, great guy, which makes it, I mean, that much better that he's humble, generous, kind, awesome guy. Yeah. I, I have to tell you, I, I feel like I should be honest with you and say I'm kind of using you for all your connections. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have right. such over the last several years and the Magicians Forum, by the way, magiciansforum.com, and you are listening to Magicians Forum Live. Uh, oh. It is probably, as far as I know, maybe one of the first sort of live ish uh, video slash podcasts because you can't get this as well on the site, the magiciansforum.com. But uh, really, um, you know a lot of people through the forum and because magicians love to interact. Yeah, well, it's been interesting. I was shocked at how many, um, you, you think some of these names, uh, whether it be, well, Harry Lorraine, for one, who I love, or Mike Powers, you, you might imagine that they're really inaccessible. But sure. what I found is, of course, in this day and age we live in, technology and social media being what it is, it's really not that difficult to connect with folks. So, you know, when I first started the Magicians Forum, I wanted it, I knew I wanted to have sort of this lecture aspect where, uh, to add value to that community. And I've had people like, Paul Gordon, Howard Hamburg, you know, of course, Harry Lorraine did one for us, Stephen Ewell, Jason Ladani. I mean, the, the list goes on of these magicians, really talented guys. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's been great for me because now, I, of course, I a lot of these guys I get to count as friends. Just go over to the Magic Castle and sit across Howard and, the, you know, he's a friend. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been really awesome to see real friendships bloom out of the magician's forum. So Absolutely. yeah. And you know, you, you're a great guy. And you a, a friend. And, yeah. <laughs> you really are. You well, are. I will say that, um, again, uh, the, the good thing about what's happened in magic in the last several years is that unless you went to a convention or you're at the Magic Castle, or you're whatever, you, the chances of you bumping into a lot of these magicians is kind of a little rare, unless you're, like I said, you're at a conference or something like that, and you, or a convention, and you meet them. So the good thing is, with the Magicians Forum, and, and what we're doing here, is that we're bringing people, uh, really first-hand um, experiences with some of these great card people, uh, you know, whatever, sleight of hand, uh, presentation, uh, performance and that brings me to an interesting subject now we do have something coming up in a little bit with uh, our, our good friend tony clark who everybody would know master magician tony clark it, it called the magic doula he calls it the magic doula because mm -hmm. um it is a segment that will be talking about how to develop your act and in essence um give birth to your magic act and your career so I like that. that. Yeah, that's, that's kind of awesome. Um, yeah. But with that being said, one of the things that I constantly sort of battle with, and I bet you do too, uh, is the whole 
Instagram magician or the, the, the and I don't want to say the younger magicians, but, you know, there is a, a, a class of magicians now. There is a whole other category of YouTube or, or Instagram type of magicians where, you know, they, they will... Uh, you know, they will basically, you know that they're going to utilize the, the, the screen or the camera angles to be able to, you know, potentially, um, you know, drop whatever they're going to be doing and you can't see it and so on. And I wonder if you have any thoughts about the sort of the new magic that's out there. Is it really just another new category or is it something that we should be looking at and saying, I think it would be nice if you actually learned sleight of hand. <laughs> yeah well you know i think it's part of this double-edged sword of technology like i just spoke about on the one hand with social media and video you know and technology being what it is it allows certain magicians to be accessible and you you know it makes learning i think with these saturday sessions that we have the video aspect yeah. of that allows me to be connected with magicians around the world and it, it's beautiful and uh and so, but on the other hand i think that there's this aspect of how freely you know, sh secrets are shared. And a lot of these, yeah. I just think that so much is being exposed now through YouTube. And I don't know that I see it on Instagram. I'm not actually uh, as well acquainted with Instagram uh, as I probably should be here in 2019. You will be but, now. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. But there's, I think there's just, there's something about the ease in which somebody can just create an Instagram account or a YouTube account. And now they, interestingly, have hundreds of thousands of views. Some of these guys, you know, I, I, I have a YouTube account and I hardly have, but I mean, I don't know, freaking 35 <laughs> followers and nobody who the hell yeah, who cares about me. But you got some of these other guys who shock me sometimes with, and you've seen this, yeah. the, the lack of finesse and yeah. skill. And all you see is really their crotch and, yeah. and some cards. But guess what? <laughs> they got Wait, huh. a There's a new uh, label for a new magic. Uh, young person only does uh, Instagram or YouTube crotch and camera magic. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. said, you did say crotch, right? Right, I did. <laughs> and so I just think it, it's just the ease in which, you know, you know, this in its information age, you can quite literally have hundreds of thousands of followers exposing magic, mm -hmm. uh, demoing it poorly or yeah. well. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's frustrating sometimes. And it's just the age we live in. What the hell do you do? You know, I, I, it's kind of fun to, not fun, but if the, the, Halo project that I've done is yes. being sold in China somewhere because somebody downloaded it and it's sold and you're, I'm pirated and you go, yeah. well, that's kind of awesome that they felt it was good enough to pirate, yeah. but what do you do? You just, yeah. and you just, you do deal with it and it's yeah. the world that we live in. So I don't it, know what to say best. It that. is the world we live in. And I think that back in the, uh, I'll, I'll say like late nineties, early two thousands when I was working at Fox and they came out with Pleasure Island, and it was one of the first, uh, along with Survivor, one of the first reality shows. I remember being the Fox Kids Club host and saying, this is horribly disgusting. And that's mm -hmm. when the acting world turned upside down, too, because they kept saying, we want real people, and this is a reality show. And I thought, great, well, there goes acting, because mm -hmm. now all they want is real people. And it still holds that a lot of times now they go, we want real people. Well, that was back about the time when the guy on Fox TV was in that, was it a woman or a man, was mm -hmm. in that outfit and exposing big magic tricks. It was a show. I don't know if you remember this. But it was a big show. From the Masked Fox. Magician? The so, Masked Magician? Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. And, yeah, and they would expose the stuff. And I was just livid because I was really doing a lot of strolling magic and platform stuff. And, you know, nowadays, like, you're, you're right. People will do a, a, a thing and you know, they'll be very bad and you'll go, gee, that's really bad. And they're going, well, what do you think? And it's like, did you actually see it good at some point? All right. Uh, to where you yeah, can you actually know, watch it and do it right? Right. There is no Here's discipline. An, an interesting thought is, though, some might look at this and accuse us of, of, of just adding fuel to the flames because here, you know, there was a little segment, of course, with Mike demonstrating a trick. And then, hey, can you talk about this part that actually fooled me when I saw it? And then he's exposing the method and people are going to say, well, what the hell, you big friggin' hypocrite? Because now that's well, going to go out there and you're you're just doing the same thing that you're accusing these others of doing, which are we? Well, yeah, know, you know, <laughs> it is that is a good point, but but I would say that there's a difference between doing a show about the stage and watching you entertain me and then doing one about backstage. 
And in this case, this is a show specifically for magicians. Now, if someone wants to filter through the first 20 minutes, by the way, I know the exact count, and then see Michael Powers, Mike Powers, do that trick and then give the uh, tutorial a little bit on that, then right. so be it. But I think just to be safe, um, this is a show of exploration of magic. And uh, in no way, shape, or form are we going to uh, accidentally show something and go, well, uh, because we're bad. Um, right. And and then just say, you know, uh, I hope you've learned something from that. Um, but I I think one of the things that I do want to say and duly note about the uh, the industry, I hate to call it an industry, our philosophy, our way of life is that, you know, there are some amazing cardistry stuff and some, you know, I remember back in the 80s and 90s where if you wanted to do uh, if you wanted to do a, a color change, you might p quite possibly already have a card palm and go like this and then go like that. Well, nowadays you're I mean, exposing, it's like, huh? It's you're like exposing. this is exposure. Oh yeah, I forgot. Sorry about that. Just kidding. Go ahead. Go proceed. But yeah, but the point is, is that you know nowadays it's literally there are some amazing technology of technique that has happened and it's mind blowing some of it. So I give sure. the uh, credit to that, of course. And some of the young people doing this stuff are taking coins and literally going like this. And you're going, wow. Oh, Nelson crazy. T. Downs would be like, oh, what? Mm -hmm. So yeah. good stuff. I, I hear you. Yeah. So you ask, you bring up a great question. And, uh, you know, I don't know that there's a very clear answer no. as to you know, how to how to deal with it, you know, how to stop exposure, how to ensure that, you know, pirating, it's just, yeah. it's, it's pervasive, and I think it's, like I said, it's the world we live in, and you deal with it. So. Well, one thing I can guarantee you're going to get here on the Magic, the Magicians Forum, uh, and, and the Magicians Forum Live, uh, go to the site, themagiciansforum.com, is that you're going to get some of the top experts in the the field of magic and prestidigitation. So if you are interested, at least what we can do is uphold some of the creed, like never tell the secret type of things, and also that you really need to practice it and not only technique, but you want performance. With that being said, we definitely are going to spin off to uh, Tony Clark and his segment coming up here uh, in yeah. just a little bit. So uh, right now, as I join the screens, I'm very excited to say that this guest is going to be doing something on an ongoing basis. And that is something I'm very excited about because when you think about Tony Clark, which, by the way, you're looking at, uh, master magician, and also, I want to say, extremely savvy businessman and a, present, uh, a, a, a person who trains people on how to get their careers online and get themselves, uh, you know, get their show and their acts dialed in. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Tony. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. There, you there is applause. You don't hear it, but there is applause. Um, so very excited that when we originally started talking to you about doing this sort of concept, you said, I got an idea. And yes. it's called Magic Doula. So yes. tell us what that is. Well, that came around, came to me over, over a year ago. And it's when I help people. That's what I feel like. You know, when I had my son, we had a doula to give help give birth. Sorry. Yeah, you did too, right? So, you know, they're there. They prepare you. They tell you what to expect. They give you videos. They uh, kind of practice you with you breathing. I'm like, oh my god, this is like what I do with the magicians, you know, to get act ready. Yeah. And it's, it really is exactly what it is. If you really care about what you're about to do and you're right. serious about it, you you got to go to somebody who's going to help you get that, you know, launched in a better, safer way. You can probably do it, of course, but the the doula is there to make it quicker, easy, and less more uh, and less painful. Absolutely. I, I just hope that when you're doing your magic, uh, that your wife isn't in as, in as much pain as... No. Well, <laughs> well, the, it depends. Uh, the rehearsal, which we'll talk about later, the rehearsal uh, regimen is could be painful if you don't do it right. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, yeah. one of the things, and I'm uh, again, we're really glad that, uh, that you've decided to kind of take this part of uh, the aspect of the art... Um, the mm -hmm. discipline, the philosophy of magic, uh, of prestidigitation, of sleight of hand, is the fact that 
I personally believe that a lot of the presentation and as Rudy and I were just talking, rehearsal seemed to have slipped out the door in our modern age because people have Instagram or they, yes. you know, they have angles. They can drop stuff and you don't see it. And quite <laughs> honestly, people, and, and as Rudy made a joke earlier that you see the camera, you see their crotch, you see some cards and then boom, you know, uh, there is a lack in some cases, a lack yeah. of that um, presentation, which I've always thought was more important almost than the magic. It is, it is. I learned that firsthand from Slidini when I studied with him many years ago, over 30 years ago. I studied with him for two and a half years. And when he taught you, which you could never probably do today, I probably couldn't even do exactly how he taught me, he would teach you the first technical aspect of the trick, like coins, coins across, Hank Ping Chen, Hank Ping Chen. Do that for a week, come back, and then we'll go to the next move. Do that for a week. It took almost two and a half months to learn one routine. Wow. Because you broke it down piece by piece, and then you do it all together. Right. Wow. Who's doing that? But wow. it really works because I, to this day, I can remember it like it's in my, it's a part of my being. Yeah, you know, second it's, nature. Yeah, you know how it is. You know, when you rehearse and you, you don't want to think. You know, it should be part of your body at that point. Right. So that's that's a, that's what I do, and I, I have a thing in my book, uh, which I have my book here. It's like I pull the chapter chapter out. Oh yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah. yeah. Where, is that the, that's the book we're giving away? Yeah, that's the book we're giving away. It's Insider Secrets. Nice. And it's Mastering the Craft Show and the Business of Magic. And there's a chapter in it called The Rehearsal Ritual 100. And I say you have to minimally rehearse something before you show a public person or somebody you don't know a hundred times. Yeah. The first 25, you'll kind of feel the feel of it. Mm -hmm. The next 25 at 50, you'll kind of feel like, okay, I got a good, good, good kind of handle on it the next 25 to 75 you kind of feel like you have a little control over it and the next 25 times you could feel like confident that you could actually do it and you're not going to expose anything mm -hmm. but until then i wouldn't do it for anybody that you don't know or you know for a public person uh, a lay person i should say but that is like a, the minimum rehearsal you should do 100 times per trick and then it gets better you know as you perform it for a live audience it always gets that much better but you need to get it to a minimal point of like expertise before you show it to a public person or a lay person absolutely right. and tony how, how important do you think presentation is when you're doing something like uh, i perform your gypsy balloon it's a fantastic oh thank you fantastic routine and um and so i understand the importance of presentation you know just to rip up string and attach it okay um but i wonder the value of presentation when like me you are more of a close-up magician and i'm talking about you're out there go, trying to hit all the tables i don't know you always have time for presentation would you, do you right. when you do i don't even know if this is something you do when you're doing close-up and it's just kind of a not slam bam thank you man because that sounds right. horrible, strolling but strolling strolling yeah. yeah in those cases do you focus a lot do you work yourself personally on presenting those or is it more hey it's, it's ripped and now look it's together again it's it's interesting because that's changed now you know as you know attention spans are like eight seconds <laughs> mark Hauser, my buddy mark Hauser, looked it up like a year ago and he yeah, said oh attention spans are, are been proven eight seconds and they're probably less than that i think you have to have a little presentation obviously but in that circumstance of, of, of strolling your agenda there is just to keep their attention for a few minutes right. they're part of another event i mean i did this thing last year at, at warner brothers for a holiday party and it was an extravaganza and stuff everywhere it was great but people were like this oh, no. doing a close-up routine and then one of the three people jumped on their phone while i was actually oh, my God. Uh, she <laughs> Start to text literally right next. I mean, two feet away from me. The next person goes, "Oh, what's that?" Like, and like, "Oh, thank you, good night." Wow. <laughs> so now I think engaging them and your persona needs to be strong enough. Yeah. Keep them. So you get them. Like I do stuff. Like I like to get keep them involved. You know, grab them, get hold of this. So I sponge. You know, sponge ball. People hate sponge balls. You know what? I love it. You know why? Because their hands are occupied and they can't turn away, forcing them to pay attention. So it's a little different so now. Are you than saying something, Tony? So yeah, thank you. Well, hold on a second. Let me, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're a slinger, right? So I'll get you. I'll, right. I'll, I'll whip it out of your hand. <laughs> well, you know, interesting thing is, is that what you talked about that because I remember back in the uh, early mid '80s, and I was doing a lot of strolling. 
uh, and also a lot of balloon stuff. And I always told people, they go, man, how do you make, I was making like two or three hundred bucks for two or three hours just doing strolling tables. I did it on purpose because I wanted the, the I cut my teeth on improv. And I learned that it was about making fun with the dad and not making fun of the dad. And then yes. when I did that, my tips were huge. And the, yes. and the reason why I'm mentioning this is that I, to answer your question, Rudy, is, is that I found, even back then, that it, it doesn't matter if you did did two card money or whatever you did, but if you engage them more and you were able to really get them to be part of the excitement, that mm -hmm. one, the tip was bigger, and two, yeah. you could do less magic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. It's it's about holding them, and, and and most people like talking about themselves. So if you involve them, yes. it's a me world, right? It's the me world. It's the me selfie yeah. world. Yeah. So mm -hmm. why are they gonna sit and watch you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're right. So, give, really? give something to involve themselves. Oh, let's take a selfie together. Yeah. yeah. You know, this party. So I got into this party. You know, I was like, okay, I'm learning how to deal with this stuff. Yeah. So I started doing like selfies. And yeah, you want a video? Oh, it's video. Oh, all of a sudden the video camera starts rolling. Now you have an audience. Yeah. So then you kind of, you have to kind of, you know, work to the crowd you're at, yeah. you know? I think it's, you should have done the famous broken and restored iPhone that actually doesn't get restored. You just oh, take their phone, you break I'm, it, and you go. I love it. <laughs> now we're Brent watching has, the tricks. Anyway, Brent has those like, at the Apple. He has those phones. You buy them for like five bucks. Yes. They look great. <laughs> and I always have one with me. It just, me I mean, too. I just I haven't done it yet, but I'm like waiting to just switch it in and just throw it across the pavement or something. Yeah. Oops, sorry, you know. But you have to, you have to be careful though. You know why? If yeah. you do it, and like even like talk about it in my book is like when you deal with hecklers, if you hit them too hard, yeah. the audience will turn on you. Yeah, that's right. So you're the minority, it's right? Comfortable. Right. It's like, well, why is he upset that I'm texting? Right, right. Don't think that's yeah. bad anymore because they're all doing it. So you have to kind of be very tactful in the way you, you know, you handle those 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 very delicate, you know, those very personal. You know, people lose their phones, they have anxiety, and they freak out. You know, it's, it's like part do. of the you know i lose my, i leave mine home I'm like oh thank god it's a gift you know i don't i don't care but people like it's, it's a physical thing oh, it's I a physical know. thing yeah you know it's, I, I, you take their phone it's worse than taking the pe person's watch anymore i was doing a keynote speech in oklahoma for three thousand people at an education summit and i have a thing where i say all right everybody pull out your phone three thousand people got two jumbotrons and i'm like take your phone and what i want you to do is i want you to this because i teach people how to simplify their lives and i go i want you to text this to someone i don't care if it's your mother your brother your dog whoever has a cell phone and i want you just to simply text howdy and then and then i go okay press it and then i go when you have it put it up I go, oh, great, panoramic picture, joke. I go, now take it and take the phone face down, put it under your leg, and do not touch it until the end of my keynote. It's like I'm at an alcohol con anonymous <laughs> thing. They're like, little sweating, things. freaking out. Going, oh, God. People are like, I can't do it. Well, I got to look yeah. at the phone. So, yeah, they, people are locked and socked into them, into iPhonics. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. Tony, how about, a, how about uh, we launch the Magic Doula and – is there a particular subject that we can talk about today, um, whether it's practicing or rehearsing, practicing or, yeah. or, or and presentation, any pearls of wisdom? I think rehearsal, of course, is the first thing, right? Um, really set aside time. I say rehearsing is not good unless it's good rehearsal, right? Quality rehearsal creates quality performance. You know, if you do sloppy, you know, if you're rehearsing a car thing and you're sloppy, well, you're going to rehearse and that's how you're going to be. Mm -hmm. So quality rehearsal creates quality performance. That's number one. So put time aside and, and really focus on that performance and, and make it that, like your sanctuary, your quiet time to really rehearse that. You know, no more excuses. Back in the day when I was doing my dub act years ago, I had to buy a camera. It was 800 bucks back then and a recon camera to rehearse and watch mm -hmm. myself. The mirror wasn't doing it for me anymore. You know, it was hard. But now we have our phones. Yeah. Prop it up, put your little stand out, beep, and then put it on the counter yeah. and rehearse your act. And take notes every time, make an adjustment every time. Imagine if you improve yourself 1% per rehearsal. It compounds itself. So after 25 times, you're going to be over 100% better. And then compound it, compound it. And enjoy the rehearsal. You know, guys hate it. Like, enjoy yourself <laughs> getting better. You know, enjoy it. Absolutely. It's a physical thing. You know, enjoy it. It's like kind of have fun with it and, uh, and just watch yourself improve. So set aside the time. And, and I think the biggest thing, too, is if you could find the right material to do, that helps you segue and, and refine your act quicker. Right? Really find what fits you better. 
You know, find the character. That's a whole nother job, but find material that's actually better for you. Don't pick mm -hmm. material that somebody else is doing. Find stuff that you like. Yeah. You know, you all know some guys mm -hmm. like coins, cards, and you know, because how many? I always say, how many rock bands are there out there? There's hundreds of rock bands. They're playing notes. They're playing instruments like everybody else, but. They have their touch on it. They have their uh, brand on it. They have their adjustment on it. Make it your own. But that doesn't happen in the beginning, you know. Just start doing something, feel good about it, and then when you stop thinking, it will become yours. When you mm -hmm. stop thinking, it will become yours. Mm -hmm. That's all I ever say to people. And they're like, what does that mean? It's like, you'll get it. When you do it, you will get it. Right. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, you're looking in this way, and the audience is being shut off. But when you're not thinking, you're looking this way, and now you can look. You know, Juan Tamara has talked about the five points of magic. Always keeping your eyes connected to the audience, right? Because if you look at somebody, they look back. Yeah. So if you don't relax, you can't. It's impossible to do that because you're so confined in like, okay, i got to you know, hold the palm here. and it, right. it's, it's, it, Get that wall out and go here. Awesome. That only comes with relaxation and practice and confidence. Yeah. There's no way around it, you know. You know, that's the difference. I mean, I don't mind, you know, like we talked about the YouTube and stuff is fine. I think the live performances now are actually stronger. People see it live. They go, oh, that's cool. You know, it's a, it's like more impactful than seeing it like on a thing. Like, oh, that could be CGI or trick mm -hmm. photography or angle cuts. or. But now live, it's cool. So I know I'm enjoying it back again, doing the live performances. At first, I was like, oh, my God, it's all over the place. Magic's everywhere. But now live is good because now they're really zoning in on you and there's no room to cheat. Like they think that you're cheating them with technology, you know, so it's kind of cool, but get the act, rehearse the act, find the right materials and, uh, and enjoy it, you know, cause if you enjoy it, the audience senses it, you know, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. If you're having a good time, you know, it, sometimes you mess up a trick and you laugh at yourself, you get a better laugh out of that than a regular setup joke, you know, yeah. but just, you know, don't, don't worry about it. You know, just be, it's good not to be so perfect now because People are exposed to so many people now with this, inter, you know, uh, social media. You're seeing real people. You're not so refined like the old days when Channing Pollock and all these magicians were like perfect. You know, you know this guy's like perfect. That's how he lives. <laughs> how he has a dub. <laughs> you know? But now we're seeing people in their normal life. So if you're too like this, it's like oh, this guy, this guy's cardboard. Is you know, right. so being real is uh, much more accepted. You know, look at these YouTubers that are huge. You know, Jason Neistat, I think it's Neistat, I think it's something out of New York or something. He's, he's just, you know, skateboarding in New York and is, you know, whatever hair and he's doing his thing. People love him. Yeah. He's, but they want to see real people. They do. And they can relate better to those real people, you know. So uh, that's why in my performances now I have more fun with people. I enjoy it more, have more fun. It's not so like, I'm going to fool you. It's like, ah, I want to talk a little bit, get to know each other. I'll do a trick, it's kind of your whole, you know. So it's a little looser, you know. And, and then God rest his soul, uh, 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 Dean Dill used to call it jazzy, jazz magic, when you just don't know where you're going to go with it, sure. and uh, you just, just play with the audience, and let the, the audience take you, and it's not really formatted, you know, like a jazz piece, kind of, you know, it's kind of, you do this, and then maybe, oh, maybe the card trick, I can't get the force, but I'll do this, and maybe I'll plant the card, so that's the way to do it, you know, but only if you are practiced, you right. cannot get around that. Well, is foremost. You know, really quickly, and then we'll have to end the show, but I want to say that I think the best word you put in place is confidence. You really yeah. can't do anything, especially, I would say, probably with magic being the top of the spectrum, that if you're not confident about the thing you're doing, you're right, you are focused so much that it's a little difficult to do any sort of misdirection naturally if yes. you're just going... I'm not sure, and then they're going to see me, and then I'm going to do this. You know, right. again, confidence, one, makes your act full, and it gives you depth. It also allows you to step out and say, hey, so, uh, you know, let's try something different, everybody. And you can do that. But that's right. really what the type of thing, magic doula, I feel like we should yeah. be, uh, magic doula, uh, that I, I say to you is, is that I think you're right, and the confidence only comes in repetition. Yes, yeah. Repetition allows you to not think about it any longer, and it becomes a second nature. Look at these sports. Like, watch the NBA now, uh, Steph Curry. Those guys get the ball, they turn, they shoot the ball. Like, oh, they don't even have to look at the rim because it's part of their being. They're not going, okay, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to look, I'm going to – no, they're just doing it. It should be like brushing your teeth. Absolutely. Hey, thanks, Tony Clark, for coming on the show, The Magic Doula. And you can go to Tony's site at Tony Clark Magic Store. That's yes. Tony Clark 
magicstore.com. On Instagram, you can certainly go to Tony Clark. I'm sorry. Yeah, Tony Clark Magic. Magic. That's Tony Clark mm-hmm. Magic. On Twitter, Tony Clark underscore live. And check it all out. I know you have a YouTube channel and you do an awesome one with your kids. Kid, yeah. Kids? About magic sets. And yeah, so on, so. it's just cute. Yeah. Right, right. Hey, folks, if you want to win the book, Tony, hold up the book. Yeah. Uh, we're going to give away. It, it, can we say signed? If they're nice. I'll sign. <laughs> <laughs> if you're nice, folks, we're going to give away a Tony Clark Insider Secrets, which I'm very excited that he's uh, allowing us to have. You can go yeah. to, to the Magicians Forum, uh, dot com, and Rudy will hook up something. And uh, all we can say is thank you, Tony Clark. We'll see you next time. Oh. My pleasure. Bye, guys. Thanks, Tony. Take care. Hi, I'm Tony Clark, and I'm very excited to release my Sly News Tier 2.0. What is that? Well, it's almost the same, but it's so much easier to set up, and it's the restoration is very fast. I've done this for over five years now, and I've come up with an even simpler, faster way to do the trick, and that's what you're going to get on this download. So if you want to learn it, Download it now. The art of an illusion. As long as the illusion is strong enough, you fool people no matter what. Even if I tell you what's happening. Look, I'm going to pretend to tear the paper. Create the illusion. Watch. I didn't really do it. It's just an illusion. Sometimes the illusion is so powerful that people actually think I hear the paper tearing. Wow, what a great show. We just had we, lots of great people. I believe that Mike Powers and Tony Clark on our very first show, just, man, fantastic. Absolutely. Great stuff. And I'm glad uh, Tony's going to come back and do Magic Doula for us, and I love that name. Um, I think that we are off to a great start, brother, and I truly appreciate you coming on and doing this, you know, tag teaming with me. And I appreciate you very much, too. And just for, for those who are joining us, I just want to really, again, encourage you to go check out Mike's stuff. Again, it's mallofmagic.com. I personally have some uh, stuff from Mike, and I just can tell you he's incredibly talented. You won't... You won't regret getting acquainted with his work. Also, I would highly encourage you to get, I personally performed Tony Clark's uh, Gypsy Balloon. Oh my gosh, it gets just wonderful responses and it allows for a lot of creativity and presentation. So uh, anyhow, these magicians are fantastic. Hopefully you felt um, like you got some value out of this. I promise you we're gonna have some great things to come for guests. And so again, I just uh, really appreciate you so much, Will, for taking time out of your day to partner with me and doing this man this is going to be awesome it is awesome hey folks go to the magiciansforum.com of course this is the magicians forum live if you want to go on instagram and check us out the magicians forum and on mine uh, of course my instagram is honest huckster check us out and if you have any questions go to the site the magiciansforum.com we'll have a link there you can see it drop us a message but the best thing about that is that this show is interactive meaning that you can Go to the magiciansforum.com, sign up, and it, you can get involved with what's happening and see what we're doing during the show. And it'll be a lot of fun. Check it out. Highly recommend it because magic is interactivity. Thanks for coming on the show, folks, and watching us. And if you cannot see this, you're listening to this, you better get yourself to be able to see this soon because it is something you don't want to miss. Yeah.